Welcome to East Tennessee Pinball. Uh, today I'm working on this earth shaker. So I've got some issues with the uh, display. So let me boot it up. And uh, that pulsing is not really there. The issue are the bottom display is working fine. The top one's got all the garbage on it. If you kind of look closely, you can see it's actually pr trying to say some words. It's just got some of the segments are lit up all the time uh so let me put it in the test mode it'll make it a little more clear what's going on there we go I can get it to not pulse for you there you see some of the segments are lit up all the time uh so i'm gonna record which ones those are I'm going to write them down because I think that'll be a clue. The bottom ones are working fine. The top, the top one is actually working also. You see it's, you know, the ones that are supposed to light up are lighting up. It's just that some of them are lit up all the time. See, as this one's going across, all the ones that need to light up are lighting up. It's just, uh, these, these here are just locked on all the time. By the way, there's no actual commas on the display on here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's... There's not actually a comma there, so that's not a problem. It's just they're not embedded in them. So anyway, so I'm a, I've already written down I've, the labels for all those segments, and I'm going to just copy which ones are lit up all the time. So we basically have that, 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 and that. I believe that's correct. So it's the U, the left side, and the comma. So it's the U, the left side, the comma. So that is B, C, that's D, D, E, I'm not even showing you, F, G, and comma. So, B, C, D, E, F, G, and comma. So I've got the schematics here of the displays. I'm going to go on the bench, sit down, and get comfortable. All right, I'm sitting here at the desk. Uh, got my the schematics printed out. Uh, so you remember these. So here's a map of all the segments. And all of them are working except for B through G and the comma, and they're locked on. So let's let's start with, uh, you look at the schematic. So display one, that's our problem child. So display two, everything, that one's working properly. So everything feeding this is known to be good, including the stuff that's, that's shared with display one. So like all these these are STBs, so those are the strobe lines. So the strobes feed display one, display two. They're they're working, obviously. Uh, everything's strobing, and we know they're working perfectly because display two is working fine. So that's not a problem. Any all this stuff here that's going up to display two only, or anything that's going to two, whether it's two and one or just two, we know that's all good. Uh, these lettered segments that have the little uh, uh, apostrophe there next to it. Uh, those are those are for player two. So uh, those are all good. So our problem child again is B through G. Uh, so let's go up to the player two here, or, or sorry, player one. Uh, so I'm just going to circle them here. So it's B C. D, E, F, G, and comma, comma. So what we were, you know, it'd be nice if the, all those lined up and it was one chip. Uh, that's not the case. So since they're spread across two chips, it's probably not those two chips because it just have to be certain segments of two chips. Uh, it could be probably not. So let's look upstream. You look over here. And what do we have? Uh, I'm going to just circle them again. B, C, D, E, F, G, comma. 
uh, where you chip U10, 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 U9. Dang it. I was hoping that I thought it was going to be all one chip. It's not all one chip. Uh, one of them's off. So it could be all of U10 and one leg of one U9. Hard to say. So what feeds this is the MPU. So we'll scooch over to here. And I'm going to just circle those again. These are the ones, same ones. So it is... I've got to get my pen in here. B, C, D, E, F, G, comma. So those are the ones. So we slide them over. It's basically, I have hard to, hard to film this and draw at the same time. It's that one, that one, where's the comma? It's that one. It's all of those. Okay, the problem is the A is actually working. So everything is failed on this little resistor capacitor pack, except for the first one. That makes me a little suspicious. Uh... These resistor packs, a lot. I'm not as sure about this particular one, but a lot of times the way these are is it's essentially a resistor between uh, yeah, the say either the ground or the five volts, and it and it basically uh, kind of it goes between here and here, and then here and here, and here and here, and here and here, and it's so basically if there was a break in the resistor pack then possibly the first one would work, but the other ones wouldn't work. Uh, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Or it could be that the output of this 6821, some of them are, so you see these are, are, are uh, they're, they're feeding, so it's PB0 is working, but PB1 through PB, uh, PB7 are are the ones that are, are not working on the display. So it could be that PB1 through PB7 are malfunctioning, but PB not is okay. Uh, hard to say without digging. Uh, so there's a couple approaches. You get the logic probe, start digging the logic probe, uh, get out the multimeter and start measuring the resistance across these, like compare them to this one right up here that's right next to it. Uh, I'm tempted to do that. I, I'm a little suspicious of this, so I think I think I'll pull the board and check this one and compare it to this one right above it because, yeah, uh, they're, they're exactly the same. So whatever I measure here, I should measure the exact same thing here. So I'm going to pull the board and check that. So I got the board pulled, and if you're wondering why I didn't look at this yesterday when I was looking at uh, putting in the battery, I was assuming this problem was going to be on the display board, and I wasn't going to have to yank this out again, you know bad on me what I do notice is uh, right away this is that SR that's that SRC 2 that we were just looking at that we suspected is bad if you just look at it I mean it is physically eroded away from the heat and uh, looking at it my there's corrosion on I didn't see the corrosion yesterday when I was looking at it. I guess I didn't look very close, but there's a lot of corrosion on those pins. On those, the ones above it, a little bit on that one, but on that SRC2, there's quite a bit of corrosion. Uh, that makes me more suspicious that this is indeed our culprit. I haven't measured it yet with the multimeter. I'm going to do that here in a second. But so this is our suspect, SRC2, SRC5, the one that's working is this one right there. So I'm going to flip the board over and measure the resistance across those pins. And uh, usually there's a dot that designates like the common endpoint. Yeah, on the right of both of those resistor packs. Uh, you see that little metal dot? Metal dot. So I'm going to measure those here and we'll see if they see, appear to be wrong. 
Uh, so I don't have Jane here to hold the camera for me, but uh, I just measured, I flipped the board over and I measured between the first pin, which is the ground pin, and each of the subsequent pins. And these measurements were pretty much all over the place. And in the, say, tens of ohms, it's supposed to be a uh, 4.7K resistor array. This one that's, that's working uh, between the first pin and each subsequent in circuit, it's measuring right at about 3K ohms, every, every single one of them, uniformly. And so this one's the right one. Uh, it, it, with the This one, there was one, the, the next to the last pin, uh, which is was measuring, and by the way, between the first one and the last one, on both of them, measured like, I don't know, uh, 300 ohms or something like that. So that that's not one of the, uh, I don't know, part of the sequence. I, I'm not exactly sure what it's doing, but it, it was different. Anyway, in any case, uh, I believe possibly between the first and the last one being 3K here, that would account for possibly that A segment working because remember there's one one that's going through here that is actually working. So uh, so uh, these resist, so it's not just a resistor array, it's also got capacitors in there. So I read on PinWiki, these, these things are basically very difficult if impossible to get you might find one new, new old stock uh, but you can replace them with you apparently the capacitors that are in them are not necessary you can just put it in with a straight resistor array uh, I don't actually have any of those in here in stock either but I probably have one of these in an old board I'm gonna look around in my shop and see if I've got one in any case this thing needs to come out either way I mean it's all corroded I, I, I should have seen that night yesterday and I didn't I uh, could have killed two birds with one stone but uh, I was looking at the traces I just didn't look above it in any case uh, I'm gonna yank this out yank that out uh, I'm tempted to pull out so the other ones if not at least clean them up a little bit uh, and see if I can I know I've got a, an old board, but it's got corrosion on it, so they may be as bad as these. Uh, and I've got a System 11B board in the back. Uh, they, they, I might not, may not have a good array. Uh, although I might be able to pull one, check out some of these other ones. They're probably the same part. If they are, I can probably maybe pull one of these from the other board and stick it over here. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look around and I'll get right back. All right, so I grabbed this junk high-speed board. Uh, we'll see what some corrosion, bad corrosion will do. It's it's eat up beyond beyond repair. I mean, the traces are just toast all over. This battery is just gone down. But one interesting thing, I did measure uh, the resistance between the ground side and all the other ones, and I was actually measuring very close to 4.7, like 4.6 ohm, 4.6 k ohms even on these, even the ones that are kind of corroded here. Uh, the other one, on the good one that was working, I was measuring 3K. So I think they actually are supposed to be close to 4.7 in circuit. So I'm gonna switch out both of those. Uh, fortunately, some of these outside the corrosion zone, they're the same resistor pack. So I'm gonna take these two out and put them in the other board. And uh, hopefully that will fix the one display and prevent that corrosion from continuing to uh, eat up and prevent a future problem in display too. So uh, maybe I'll get to stand out and let y'all watch the soldering. So whenever you're desoldering, it's always good to just place a little bit of fresh solder on each joint before you suck it out. It just makes it easier to get out of there. These resistor arrays are pretty fragile, so you really can't, don't want to wrench on them too much. Probably can't see anything with my hand in the way.
This last one's got the grounding uh, strap on it, so it's really sucking the heat off. So it's gonna have to gonna have to put a little more dwell on it. I think I got it that time. Just trying to gently wiggle them a little bit. I think the ones on both ends are a little bit stuck. Uh, I need a pair of pliers. Or, sorry, screwdriver. Got them all except this last one right here. Oops, I didn't notice. Accidentally unloaded on it. luck with this last one here. Yeah, you got it there. It's completely free. Yeah, all of them are wiggling. I just can't get my hands on it. some of this off so I have some room to get my fingers in there. There we go. There's one. that one very well. Again, this last one's got the big heavy copper tray, so it's gonna be harder to get out. Gonna have to apply a little bit more heat. Unfortunately, these are kind of all folded down, uh, so that's gonna make them a little bit harder to get off of there. Basically just poked them up and now I'm trying to break them off because they, they reattach. That one I got that one I got free. 
That one's free. That one's free. I've got about two thirds of them. Take a little more work. Okay, that one there. I'm gonna re-solder it and then desolder it again. I didn't clear it very well. So I'm going to cut this plastic off so I can have a little room. Fortunately, this board is trash, so I'm not hurting anything by cutting all this off. Gives my fingers a little room to get in there. There we go. Okay. That's done. Set this aside. So I'll do the same thing with this one. I may, uh, no, I probably won't. I was thinking I might cut them off. This one I've got to be careful with the board. That one I didn't have to be careful with it because it's a trash board. This one I can't be so cavalier with. But I don't have to worry about yanking on the parts so much because the parts are trash. Fortunately, these, the, the leads are all pointing up. They're not fold down, which makes things a lot easier. Y'all are still in the field of view. I have no idea what I'm filming. Oh, I'll save that one for last. One with the grounding strap. Oh yeah, these are coming out much better. Much less corrosion on these. That always makes it easier. It's my multimeter telling me that it's turning off. Beeping. are coming out much better than the other ones. One the grounding strap again, I didn't leave it long enough.
one pin. That's, there we go. I think I left. Nope, I got them all out. that these are not kind of stuck up against the side of the trace. Ooh, I pulled that one up just a little bit just there. thing out. It's so corroded it's having a, I'm having a hard time getting it out. I don't want it. Yeah, you see underneath there it's pretty corroded. That's why it's having a hard time getting it free. Still got two of them in there. Actually just one. free so they don't look oh yeah there no there's one more that's stuck in there so I am gonna lightly sand these that one is still well hanging chad it I'm just using these as pliers and you probably can't even see but okay they're all out so I'm gonna send those up by the way these uh the solder sucker I'm using uh, uh, with Joe's Arcade, he promotes these things, and that's where I started using them. And they are the best handheld solder sucker around. I've tried a bunch of them, and he says they're the best, and he's right. <laughs> uh, I've, I've tried a couple of the the motorized ones, and uh, they're all right, but I I always find they end up getting clogged, and so I, I like the manual ones better. You know, to each his own. Anyway, I'm going to get uh, some sand, sandpaper. I'm going to sand that real lightly, and then I've got my vinegar and water solution. I'll put it 
do that, uh, clean those up a little bit, and then I'll solder in my, my new ones, and uh, we'll see. So I just put a little alcohol on here, and I'm just using this, uh, it's actually another tool I, that uh, Ronnie over at Joe's Arcade suggests that I'm kind of fond of. It's actually a honing, it's kind of an eraser with uh, real fine abrasive in it. This is the fine one, there's also a coarse one, but it's, it's really a pretty great tool for doing stuff like this. So I'm trying to get to the point of getting these things shiny, but I don't want to go too far and start burning through the traces for sure. The traces are pretty fine on this board. So the idea is to get most of the corrosion with the abrasive, and then if you happen to have any left, use the vinegar to try to neutralize it. Because if you leave it behind, it'll keep going. It's almost like cancer. You know, you do, the surgeon tries to get most of it out. And if they miss a little bit, you know, this is like the chemotherapy or the radiation, whatever, you know, to get the little bits that the surgeon couldn't get. Uh, ideally, the surgeon gets it all. Clean margins. Sometimes you may not be able to. Uh, so it's always good to put a little vinegar on there too. some of that vinegar in there. I'm also going to get some on the legs on these back ones because they had a little bit of corrosion. I'm not pulling them out, but I'm going to at least treat them with a little vinegar. Yeah, you can see it foaming up a little bit, which tells you that there was some vinegar as the acid. They, uh, the, Leakage from the batteries is actually alkaline. So, you just flush it off with some alcohol, that way it dries a little faster. Also, flushes off the vinegar. You don't want to leave that acid on your board. I'll let that dry a little bit and then I'll uh, solder on these these two that I pulled out. And actually before I pull, put them in there, I'll probably go ahead and measure them out of circuit and make sure that I didn't overheat them or anything or tweak them. Make sure they're actually measuring the 4.7 across all of them. So it's, I don't know which, which end is which. That's the other thing I don't know how to figure out. And uh, looks like that's the common end with the dot on it. So between the first one, the second, third, fourth, fifth, they all should be, like, between the first and second should be 4.7K ohms. For the first and third should be 4.7K ohms, etc. So I'm going to measure those before I put them back in. Uh, and we'll see. So we're just going to check these uh, resistor packs, make sure they're good. So I'm measuring between the first and all the other ones. Uh, should be 4.7K. 4.6, fine. So I'm just moving on down the line here. And between the first and the last is almost open, mega ohm. To another chip here. Oops. There we go, 4.6 there. So they're both 4.6.
yeah, for the person last open. So okay, so those both look good. So I'm gonna put them back in the board. Uh, well, I'll let it, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit longer here, and uh, we'll only take a couple of seconds for y'all. Don't worry. All right, I got the resistor packs stuck back in there. Just gonna run down the line and solder these up real quick. Probably can't see anything hand in the way. Alrighty, uh, I'm gonna let this dry. I, it's only been like. 10 minutes, I uh, sprayed all that solder, uh, sprayed all the alcohol in there. I'm going to let it dry for at least a couple hours before I plug in the board. It has a, the alcohol can get under the chips and stuff, and it can reside a little bit longer than you think it can. And uh, don't want to fry something because I'm in haste. All right, so I got the board back in the earth shaker. Got my two SCRs back in there. I boot it up. Weird, the knocker knocked. It's not locked on, but it did knock for a second. Anyway, the displays are working. I don't know what's up with that knocker. I'm gonna do that again, see if it does it again. Didn't do it a second time. That's weird about the knocker. Just keep an eye on that. Uh, anyway, displays are working. Again, the flashing is just, uh, my scan rate of my phone is somewhat approximating the scan rate of the uh, displays and it makes it blink. Anyway, hope you liked the videos. Please click like or subscribe. Adios.